talk on the second part of Glen Bandar engineering, uh, which I the really briefly the uh, mentioned the background of Glen Bandar before yesterday. Now today I'm going to talk about the uh, most recent work on Glen Bandar engineering, and uh, I uh, emphasize that in the uh, future work for this Glen Bandar engineering at the end of my talk. So, <coughs> so last time I emphasized for the Glen Bandar engineering, structure dependent Glen Bandar is very important. Because of structure Glen Bandar, structure dependent property, we can use such a structure dependent property to uh, produce a desirable bulk property of polycrystal material. This is the most important part. But I actually, second the important uh, issue is how to bridge the, the structure dependent property of individual boundary to uh, bulk, uh, bridge the bulk property of polycrystal material. This is the second part. So because the polycrystal material contains a huge number of grain boundary, but the individual boundary has a own character, structure, and property. So how can we combine or bridge individual to bulk? This is it that I'm going to talk, uh, speak today. So of course, already, Nearly 15 years ago, uh, Professor uh, Pitch or O had already uh, discussed or taken into account the effect of boundary as using the grain side. That is the, the physically mean the grain side, the grain boundary density. So, of course, as you know, the, the mechanical property or yield stress or fracture stress depends on grain boundary density. This is the first attempt of Glen Bandar engineering, I think. But uh, anyway, in this case, the structure-dependent property was ignored because all the just if we think about it, just Glen Bandar density, that no, we do not take into account the difference of boundary structure or boundary character, just the density. So we have to know the effects, so we have to take into account the Rembrandt the structure dependent property. Uh, but anyway, as I mentioned before, the boundary, effects of boundary are two whole. One is a beneficial effect, the other is a detrimental effect. So to design the bulk property, we have to enhance the beneficial effects of Rembrandt. And then we have, we have to, what should I say, reduce the detrimental effects of grain boundary. This is the basic idea of grain boundary engineering. Very simple. So, so we have to know what is the detrimental effect of uh, the grain boundary, what is the beneficial effect, uh, uh, beneficial or detrimental effects of grain boundary. Of course, as you know, the <coughs> In, during the deformation or uh, the uh, deformation under stress, as you know, the intergranular fracture or grain bundle fracture can occur. And then the intergranular fracture called the brittleness of polycrystal material. Often, most of the structure material, uh, the intergranular brittleness of the structure material is a very serious problem. So we have to control the, such an intergranular brittleness not only metallic material or even ceramic or another electroceramic material. See, uh, often many of you already uh, the, uh, have experience that the brittleness or steel or iron alloy is a very serious problem for the structure material. But anyway, so there are the two fold effects of red fire. So. <coughs> So to, of course, when we develop the material, most of the material, the engineering material, 
polycrystal material. Sometimes we use a single crystal but, uh, the, uh, material like a hairpin bread. Actually, that's the, uh, the, not really single crystal but, uh, material, also the polycrystal material. And unidirectional solidified polycrystal material. But uh, anyway, when we pro uh, the produce the desirable or high performance functional or structural material, we have to know that such a relationship. The, of course, the, in the case of the polycrystal material, as you know, the mechanical property or a functional property, like, a, for example, the, in the case of the solar cell, photovoltaic, the property is very important, I'm going to talk. And also, in the case of the, I should say, uh, 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 actuator material, shape memory alloy effect, uh, shape memory effects also important. And also, uh, not only the, the, uh, the uh, fracture behavior, also for work hardening or hard, uh, workability to improve the workability, sometimes we have to produce the super plasticity, even in the very brittle material. Actually, by designing the micro and the microstructure, even the, the brittle material becomes the super plastic, the show the plastic behavior. So I like this. So always to produce a desirable property, in the case of precursive material, we have to control the membrane and micro through the, by choosing, selecting, the, using the suitable processing method. This is the, the outline of the Rembrandt engineering. So until recently, still even at present, we don't know the, what's the uh, pro, uh, appropriate processing for the specific material. So just we are uh, trying to find. But uh, anyway, in the last two decades, we have mm, established to some extent the grandmother engine, which I'm going to do. Anyway, as I mentioned before, the grandmother related phenomena, like an intergranular structure, a uh, fracture, strongly depends on the grandmother uh, character or grandmother. So high energy random boundary can break very easily. At high, even at high temperature, because the random bound, high energy boundary can slide very easily, and also diffusion occurs very easily. So, because of the cavitation or boundary sliding can occur, because of this, the fracture will occur integral. But uh, actually, in this case, uh, stress uh, axis direction with the horizontal. But as you can realize, low energy boundary will not break even the maximum tensile stress like this. So how much effects of boundary cell base from you can even, you can see. But anyway, another thing, important thing, because in real polycrystal matter, how different type of boundary are connecting to each other, also another important. Because most of the, the metallurgical phenomena often occur by percolation process because pass of the uh, the uh, site are connecting in two dimensional or three dimensional. So this is also important. So <coughs> for example, in the case of intergranular fracture, uh, also this is the first observation uh, as, uh, in, in my opinion how the mm, brittle or uh, ductile transition occur due to the change of fraction mode. Uh, about nearly 20 years ago, we observed, it. we made an in-situ observation of fracture process in polycrystal matter. Before the fracture test, we characterized the whole brain body. And then, we, in this case, we put the guy just so liquid metal embrittle network. In this case, cup up the uh, brass polycrystal material. I think. So 
plus can be very important by God. So, <coughs> but uh, normally without uh, the uh, waiting of uh, God, never interpret your structure, never. But uh, anyway, the, as you see, the random boundary uh, pressure, pressure easily break and then crack propagate. So we can observe the propagation of the crack. And then when the crack, uh, propagating crack, meet a triple junction, uh, stress axis are horizontal. And then here is the boundary, and here is the boundary. But anyway, this boundary, the, stress, the no, normal stress is very low. It is uh, very high, but uh, this is the low angle boundary. So the, because of low energy, crack cannot propagate around this. But anyway, at rather higher energy boundary, sigma 25 boundary, can break for a while, but again, this is a still low energy boundary. So fracture mode occurred from intergranular to transgranular fracture, like that. So depending on the boundary type, the crack propagation can change, uh, the fracture mode can change. So like this. So you can easily imagine. If the <coughs> high energy weak boundary are connecting in the, in the very frequently, typical intergranular fracture occurs like this. But if the high energy boundary or low energy boundary are connecting at a triple junction like this, in this case, crack, uh, the propagation uh, uh, fracture mode can change from intergranular to transgranular fracture. In this case, if the transgranular fracture occurs, the fracture energy increase. So that means the fracture toughness increases. So like this. So fracture mode can change depending on the boundary character distribution. How much, how may, uh, what's the density of the low energy, high energy boundary, and how the different type of boundary are connected to each other. So like this. So <coughs> now when we discuss the fracture process, or fracture mechanism of polycrystal material, maybe we have to take into account not only the macroscopic scale, even not only microscopic scale, even the atomic, atomistic scale of interface or grain boundary has been taken into account for the, to understand of the fracture mechanism or fracture behavior, fracture property of polycrystal material. So this is the recent now. So now, on the basis of such observation, we, uh, about uh, nearly 10 years ago, I proposed the, the concept of the grain boundary engineering around that time. And then, since that time, we have, my group has been deeply involved in the grain boundary engineering, not only structural material, also functional material. Last 10 years, we have uh, been deeply involved Remember the engineering of the structure, uh, functional material, the, not only the ceramics or semiconductor or uh, I'm going to do. Anyway, so in this case, again, as I mentioned, for the grain bundle engineering, we have to enhance beneficial effects of grain boundary and control the detrimental effects of grain boundary. And also another new thing is the we have to generate a new function. For example, in the electroceramics, the PT, uh, PTC uh, uh, characteristic of electroceramics, like a titan, uh, titan, uh, barium titanium, in this case, single crystal isn't, never shows the PTC or positive the, uh, temperature resistance. But uh, only the, the polycrystalline or bicrystal sample shows the PTCR characters. So the presence of grain boundary is really necessary. So like this, to produce a new function, we need, we have to control the grain boundary. And then for this purpose, what parameter control the grain boundary? Firstly, grain boundary character distribution. Actually, this 
the parameter was introduced, the uh, proposal by myself in 1981. So since that time, many people are gradually, gradually in, uh, uh, using this parameter to control the grain bundle, the bundle in polycrystal matter. Nowadays, GBCD is now uh, become more popular. And uh, so I'm very pleased to uh, this situation because this is very important. Not only the boundary density, grain size, we, by take the, uh, taking the, taking this parameter, we can take into account structural dependent property of uh, the grain band. And then, as I mentioned, grain boundary connectivity is also important, secondly. And also recently, we, uh, many people uh, have recognized the role of triple junction. The, so again, triple junction has own character depending on the type of boundary are connecting uh, to each other at, at the triple junction. So as, as you know, the triple junction uh, can be a preferential site of the nucleation of the new phase or fracture or cavitation like this or segregation. So again, you, we have to take into account this. But uh, this is the most recent one. Just three or five years uh, uh, since that time, uh, many, uh, many people have uh, been taken into account the, uh, the role of triple junction. Also, we have to know that how the grain boundary character distribution depends on the grain size. I wonder, can you predict the, the grain boundary character distribution in your sample, your sample, when the grain size is small or large, what's the pass a fraction of special boundary or what's a fraction of high energy boundary? It's not at the moment, unfortunately, it's not so easy. But anyway, again, to some extent, now because of the recent basic stuff, we can uh, uh, predict to some extent, as I'm going to talk. And also, what the relationship between the grain boundary character distribution of texture? So when the particular material has a very sharp texture or a random texture, what the grain boundary character distribution? Again, we can predict or experimental or theoretical. So like this, this is the background. So now, if we classify the material into the two uh, the category, structural material or functional material, what requirement for the structural material or functional material? Of course, for structural material, we need high strength, but also we need high fracture happiness. Otherwise, we cannot use the structure material. Because up to now, still there is such a dilemma for material design. When we increase strength of material, normally material becomes a ductile, a brittle, sorry. So there is a very the, the, the dilemma for material scientists. So, but anyway, we need to both high strength and high fracture. Otherwise, we cannot use structural material for the, the structural construction or machine construction. This is a, also, again, sometimes, of course, to process or to produce material for the specific usage, we, we need workability or plasticity. Otherwise, just the ceramics, we have to produce some parts as net the shape uh, design only. But anyway, we need to work a bit. Otherwise, otherwise, even we cannot cut the material. This is very important. Anyway, of course, in the case of functional uh, material, uniqueness of function is very important. Electronic, magnetic, optical, or any other uh, material, uh, the function is very important. So again, in the case of functional material, of course, high efficiency or high reliability is very important. Otherwise, from sample to sample, if the efficiency or reliability change, we cannot rely on such a the, the 
the material. So we cannot use such a uh, material up. Again, but the, even the functional material, we need some high fracture toughness. Because if during the service, if material breaks very easily, just we touch the material, if the part becomes very uh, fragile, I think in that case, we cannot use the material, such a material as a part. Anyway, we have such a background. So how can we produce Desirable the the uh, bulk material, but anyway, recently material type or kind uh, the the how the day the various type of material containing the, the, the interface of grain band. As you know, the by the multi multi layer thin film the case, there are so many interface interface boundary like this. So in this case, such a presence of such an interface can affect, for example, in this case, the magnetic property, uh, sometimes the electronic property, even the mechanical property. Last month, oh no, last week, I attended an international conference on the, the indentation uh, the technique. In this case, symphoid, the mechanical property of symphoid is the test the, the measured by using an indentation technique. So in this case, if you make an indentation test of the symphony, such an interface can affect the such the mechanical property very drastically. Of course. So now such an effects of interface we have to be taken into account to design or predict the real polycrystal matter. Anyway, so as I already mentioned, con take into account such the, uh, the parameter, microstructure parameter, almost of the data, rather new parameter compared with the grain size or any other microstructure parameter which you are familiar already. But uh, anyway, such a parameter, we, we can determine such a parameter by using the, for example, recently developed orientation imaging microscope, just we say oh, called OIM. If you use field emission gun SEM, I think you can characterize the all the grain boundary, even the not, as I mentioned last time, ceramics, uh, even the such a nano grains, the fine grains material like this. Anyway, now, as I just asked before, what's the relationship between the grain size and the boundary characteristic? Here, if you plot frequency of we call coincidence, special order structured boundary of in the other as a function of grain size, in the case of some mechanical process produce uh, polycrystal material, like a metallic, most of the metallic material. Mo normally, as you know, the metallic material, iron or any other material, uh, the, uh, from the mill cast and then the rolled and was swayed like this. But anyway, such as, and after uh, uh, such a process, mechanical process, you annealed to some extent uh, as you uh, desire. The, so this thermal mechanical process case with increasing grain size, the frequency of low energy boundary tend to decrease. So this is a rather general tendency. But uh, I I want to emphasize this is rather thick and the mechanical produce the sum of metallic. But in the case of the polycrystal sample produced by other processing, for example, in this case, iron silicon alloy, but this iron silicon by produce a rapidly solidification from the melt. So this is a very thin sample. In this case, with increasing the grain size, 
case of a fraction of low energy boundary increase like that. So quite opposite tendency we observe. So depending on the processing, even for the same material, I think that such a duration is quite different. This is very important for the finding. So we, we have to know the otherwise we cannot predict the particle. So next thing, again, texture. What's the relationship between the texture and the grain boundary character distribution? One example, again, iron silicon case. When we characterize grain boundary in rapidly solidified annealed the iron 6.5% uh, uh, silicon alloys, Actually, as you know, the, this is the, the, the typical, most important soft magnetic material because at silicon content, 6.5 weight percent, uh, gave us the, the magnetic direction almost of zero. So this is a very, uh, the uh, best, the soft magnetic material for a transformer, any other model called uh, so anyway, in this case, after rapid solidification, that's the, we can observe random texture. So the grain orientation is randomly distributed. But when we anneal this randomly oriented sample at say about 1100 degrees for one hour, we can get a very sharp one wall texture. But if we increase annealing temperature, just 100 degrees C, up to 1200 degrees, C, this time we can observe very sharp one one more texture. So depending on that annealing temperature, we can introduce different type of the texture. And then for this and for this, if we characterize the brain bound, as you see, in, in this case, when the sample has a very sharp texture within the, the say, five degree or six degree the, from one or more division only that. In this case, as you see, if, if the, the, in this case, surprisingly, we can observe only lower no five, sigma five, 13, 25, Coins, sigma coincidence boundary. Why other boundary didn't occur? Only such a specific sigma boundary could occur. And next thing, in the case of 110 textures, another different sigma boundary occurred. In this case, of course, uh, sigma 1 means the lower middle boundary. Uh, with the misorientation up to 15 degrees. So, <clears throat> but other is the higher number, but a special. In this case, 3, 9, uh, 11, 17, okay. So why? Uh, in this case, as you know, the iron silicon, the PCC uh, uh, structure, uh, the PCC structure. In this case, from the coin sense side lattice, theory for green boundary structure. We can predict like this. For one wall rotation from the lower sigma band, one, five, 13, uh, like this. In this order, we can predict this, the for one wall rotation axis. So exactly as we expect from this order, this is so this means low sigma value, as I mentioned the last time, the order, degree of order depends on the sigma value. So low sigma value uh, corresponds to the high order of the atomistic structure. So as you expected, exactly like this. Uh, but if some of you are very carefully looking at uh, this figure, he or she recognized oh, some the 
17 sigma is missing, right? So maybe you can, right? So nearly 20 of them are already the Professor Bashir Pitek and his co-worker, they are seven seven calculate boundary energy of BCC coincidence boundary. In this case, only sigma 17 or for the one who wrote it till boundary. That's has a, a higher energy. So <clears throat> brain bound which have the lower energy tend to occur more easily in age. This is the, actually, just two weeks ago, uh, three weeks ago, I attended the American TMS meeting in the, the, the Pittsburgh, and then Professor the Kinder Leda of the, David Kinder Leda of the Carnegie University, where they present the theoretical work on the relationship between the texture and the uh, brain boundary character distribution. Exactly, we expected like this, that the certain tendency is to be. So, maybe theoretically or experimentally, you know, this, there are the certain tendency, right? Anyway, so another thing, another important thing, finding is if we brought that this value or the value of frequency of specific sigma bar right, as a function of sigma, there is such a nice relationship as you see. So if we plot the inverse scale of sigma, we have for the three point fraction uh, frequency of this as a function of this, there is a nice relationship. So the, this slope depending on the annealing. So if we change the temperature, annealing temperature, and if still such a linear relationship can exist, I think in this case, we can predict the frequency of a specific sigma boundary occurring in this material, right? So this is an empirical law, but it's still very useful. As, as this figure shows, we can quantitatively predict the frequency of in real policy. This is very important. But this is, the, as I mentioned, PCC case. But in the case of FCC case, like a nickel or a standard steel, the, the gamma steel, FCC, uh, which has an FCC structure. In this case, frequency deviate from this linear relations with uh, decreasing a sigma value. Because in this case, multiple twinning can occur during annealing. Because multiple twinning means sigma 3, 9, 20. Because if the one boundary meets another twin, that the sigma nine boundary can occur. And then if the three sigma nine boundary meets sigma uh, the three, three and the nine meet, we can produce another twin. There, there is such a very elegant basis. Basis. So now, depending on the sharpness of texture, we can predict the frequency of a special one. In this case, the Professor Grabowski's group uh, already uh, they published uh, theoretical prediction and compared with the, our data. And then if uh, the predictor matter has a sharp within the five degree, sharp one or -on texture, or one on -on texture, or one on texture, or a mix and or a mixture of like this. In this case, now we can quantity the fraction of special. So, <clears throat> and then often some people ask at the international conference, sigma value is just the geometrical value for the 
the, the geometric of the, the body of the, uh, the describe the brain, brain boundary character. So most important energy or strength. But anyway, as we expected from geometric of the sigma value, right, the other physical meaning of degree of order, of course, the boundary inclination is another important parameter. But anyway, roughly speaking, or firstly, the approach, uh, approximation, still from even from the recent the observation, low sigma, the boundary shows the low energy boundary, such a tendency. This has not been published yet, but anyway, most recent. So we have to confirm by experiment, then gradually, gradually. Otherwise, many people do not breathe. You know. So <laughs> one by one, we have to confirm. Anyway, to control the brittleness or intergranular brittleness, how can we design the grain boundary character distribution or boundary connecting? So we, sometimes we need to model to do the modeling. So about maybe more than 15 years ago, we model the fracture process in polytechnical using as you know the tetra tetra kaidekahedron shaped grain we the, uh, and then polyhedral material consists of such a shape of uh, the huge uh, number of grain uh, with uh, such a uh, shape. And then we distribute low energy boundary, high energy boundary. In other words, weak boundary or strong boundary. And then how crack can propagate in the three dimension. And then uh, one of the results, if this, if we put on, this is a fracture toughness as function of the fracture, fraction of special boundary, strong boundary. With increasing a strong boundary, fracture toughness will increase, tend to increase, depending on the material. This value means toughness of grain interior, toughness of inter, uh, grain boundary. So if this value is rather small in this case, there is not a big difference between grain boundary and uh, grain interior. So this is uh, just like a uh, metallic material, particularly uh, copper or aluminum. Like but uh, in this case, boundary uh, toughness is quite different from the transparent. So this means the, like a ceramics. So depending on the material, I think that this is such a tendency. Particularly important is this. In this case, in the case of brittle material, always with increasing the special strong boundary, we can increase the toughness of brittle This is the result of such a prediction by model. So anyway, whether this is a true or we have to do that. Uh, confirmed by experiment. Firstly, simply speaking, this is a nickel alumina Ni3 here. As you know, the, this is the very most brittle material, as you know. Without boron, I think uh, many people in the past thought this is impossible to get the ductile ductility. But we even without uh, the addition of boron, we can introduce, uh, we can improve the ductility very drastically. At room depth, without any additional boron, as you see, the as grown condition, the <coughs> at room temperature, we can observe, get to about 50 or 60 percent elongation. But this is the as grown. But once we rolled this sample, such a ductility disappeared immediately. But uh, after this, you know, after rolling, again, we anneal 600, 800, like even 1,300 degrees. Most of the, in the case of most of the metallic material, if we, you anneal such a, maybe ductility will come back. But anyway, in this case, never ductility will never come back. Why? Because 
if we determine the percentage of random boundary, weak boundary, in this case, high energy boundary, before we roll in, as ground condition, only 30% of green boundary is weak boundary. Oh, sorry, uh, weak boundary only 30%. So another 70% is strong bank to integrate the fracture. But uh, after annealing, the most of the boundary, 70% of boundary are weak bank. So that means the intergranular fracture can occur very easily in this condition. This is a So how, how important to control the brain matter character. This is one of the demonstrations. And they hope. Uh, anyway, to control the brittleness is very important in fracture. And another brittleness is due to stress corrosion uh, cracking. Uh, so, for example, particularly material for the nuclear reactors, nickel based alloy, alloy 600, if you Process or produce as normal. The by conventional method, the processing intergranular flux, uh, the corrosion occurs from the surface like this. But if we intentionally increase uh, the low energy boundary up to almost double, some place or oh, of course the boundary. If the high energy boundary occurred, corrosion occurred, but as for the Corrosion resistance drastically improved. So now, the, this is what's done by the prototype pattern of the Ontario Hydro groups. And then now they are the expanding this work to control the corrosion resistance, the, 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 the uh, battery, uh, the grid, because most of the as you know, they, you are using the battery for, the, for your car or bike. The, the corrosion occurred. So ordinary cor the process, ordinary process the battery grid. If we corrode the uh, co make a corrosion test in the sulfuric uh, acid, the corrosion occurs, and the so the grid separated into tiny pieces for uh, long uh, the Test. But when we improve, increase the fraction of the special boundary, I think uh, that remains unchanged like this. So maybe in the near future, if the life of battery can be expanded up to twice or three times, but uh, I think that is not it's exciting. So anyway, it's not good for the... Uh, uh, now, like this, we can control the fracture, the intrinsically brittleness are also extrinsic, extrinsic brittleness by, for example, sub, the oxide oxidation brittleness for high temperature material. But uh, I do not have a, uh, enough time, so I have to skip. And then, of course, the if we control the weak boundary, the reduce the percentage of weak boundary and reduce the length of the path. Of, of course, we can, in, uh, like this, we can control the, in this case, we can control the oxidation or stress corrosion. Anyway, now I'm just another five minutes or four minutes, I, I want to mention. Because nowadays, we have to construct micro machine, not ordinary size machine. So in this case, you can imagine, this is the 80 micrometers. So one millimeter, the, like this, you can recognize the distance gap. But one tenth of the one millimeter is 100 micro. So you can almost touch your people. In this case, we can still produce nowadays we have to produce such a micro. So if you produce such gear with coarse grained material, here the grain boundary, and then if 
gear, another gear touch, maybe this piece, the tools easily play. If the boundary is eh, boundary is high enough, we need to So how can we produce very homogeneous material? Very important. And then even the nano crystal material, depending on the boundary character distribution, fracture tough because much more strongly dependent. For example, in this nano, uh, uh, nano nickel bar uh, case, grain size almost the same, but the percentage of the special bond, 50%, this is a 40%. But increasing the fracture of special with strong bond, just a 10%, fracture toughness drastically increased almost twice because for example, the nanocrystal contain extremely high density of grain. So much more important to control the grain boundary character distribution. Now, finally, maybe I have to mention how can we control the grain boundary microstructure? In just ten, uh, last 10 years, we are using the, the magnetic annealing or magnetic crystallization, or magnetic sintering, or any other magnetic, the process, the metallurgical process in magnetic field. So using a superconducting. So our machine, in the heat, maximum temperature is 1500 degrees, at the magnetic field up to six Tesla. So most important part is, for example, if we anneal nanocrystal material without, while with magnetic field, there is a very big difference between the microstructure. Without applying magnetic field, such abnormal grain growth occur. But by applying magnetic, very homogeneous grain structure But of course, the at third, beyond a certain period, uh, uh, annealing time, grain growth occur, but still microstructure is very produce a very homogeneous grain structure, microstructure. The, the magnetic application of magnetic field is very useful. But anyway, and another thing, if you anneal from the amorphous state, you can produce very fine nanocrystal material. Because from the, but when you crystallize the amorphous, if you apply the magnetic field, what happens? This is very important because so in the case of iron, the uh, boron silicon alloy case, if you apply the magnetic field in this case, without magnetic field, as you see, very colorful grain are formed. That's a different orientation. But if you apply the magnetic field, as you see, the very sharp one one wall texture. But the if you uh, apply the magnetic perpendicular to the ribbon, just it's not so clean like this. Anyway, magnetic field application is so useful, and then we can control the property better. Okay, that's the dependent on microstructure. Anyway, so now not only structural material, even for functional material, even the the shape memory of the such the functional material or another P PDT or actuator material and also semiconductor material even for for example polysilicon grain boundary electric properties totally depends on boundary high energy boundary the preferential site of recombination of electron and positive form. So solar cell, efficiency of solar cell strongly depends on fraction of grain boundary character distribution. So recently we studied electric property of grain activity of grain boundary in silicon and then designing modeling how the efficiency of the, the, the solar cell can be changed by controlling the magnet. So now I have to conclude Quite recently, the professor, uh, the Herbert Reiter of, in Germany, is the inventor of nanocrystal material. 
Australia. He proposed, the, uh, he wrote a paper. So now with increasing the density of the boundary, even for the, the uh, two-phase material, the near the grain boundary, maybe electric charge different can occur. So special pro property can occur depending on the, the material. So we have to predict and then produce the material. So maybe now from the two, 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 first century, we have to neutralize such a basic knowledge of Grenbach property and Grenbach or by interface engine or Grenbach to produce desirable properties as we wish to have or to use. So finally, as I mentioned, the Dr. Donald McLean, of, he was the NPL uh, for many years, and here he was a pioneer, one of the pioneers of the grain boundary study. He, he, he is silver, and uh, just three years ago, or two years ago, he wrote me uh, uh, to encourage my study like this. So, so it, it, uh, it's not so clear, but anyway, he, he always encouraging the young people. So as I proceed until this state. So it's very important for young people to encourage. So I really wish to encourage young people to enter this great battery this uh, field in the near future. Thank you for your attention. So we the first Thank you very, very much today. Um, so you've said a lot about how grain boundaries influence the properties. But we haven't said a lot about how to create certain kinds of distribution of boundaries. Uh -huh. Is that coming in the next the lecture? I wonder if you wish. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because, for example, uh, I can talk about the, the Greenbank engineering by magnetic field, focus of magnetic field, yeah. field more or sometimes sintering, or depending on processing. I would have thought, uh, I would have thought it's uh, useful uh, for us to learn how to actually control the grain boundary. Yes, yeah, so I just briefly mentioned by the case, several cases, the magnetic annealing from the amorphous, or right. like this. So if, but I uh, talk that it's not enough, I think, <laughs> because I, I already planned it. Five lecture, different yeah. title. Also, I want to depend on you. <laughs> Any questions? Any question? Very, very much work because very e easy question, rather difficult to answer. <laughs> Please. You had a very, a very interesting graph relating uh, texture Thank to. You. Um, That's to, do you think the grain boundaries determine the texture, or the texture determines the grain boundaries? No, I think, you see, how the polycrystal material form depends on the process, depends on if the, from the melt or powder by sintering or thermomechanical processing. In this case, depending on the processing, because in this case, that's the liquid phase. In this case, the powder already solid phase. So how to uh, produce a polycrystal sample? In this case, of course, maybe nucleation occurred from the like this. So in this case, again, depending on the temperature or atmosphere, I think, boundary form like this. So if you, for example, you apply some external field, you can control the texture automatically. You can control the, the boundary type. So without, for example, magnetic field or with magnetic field, I think different boundary can, can be introduced like this. Okay, same, because even the thermomechanical process, if you 
deform the material and uh, deform the, there are so many dislocations in grain interior but the new grain has to form so in this case we already started the last 20 years some specific high energy uh, strain energy area can be the, the nucleation premature nucleation site so because of heterogeneity of strength energy like this so depending on the material or processing we can control the data so as according to our question whether we can produce a texture depending on the initial state of matter that's the minor and the process. So I guess, uh, I guess, you know, in this last case, possibly the initial grain market structure determines how you form the new grains. I don't know. Is that? I was particularly interested in the graph after that, where you had the change in the type of poison inside that you had. you know, in this case, some of the kind of new creation and grain growth. So that is the due to the formation of a new grain mountain and subsequent migration of existing part. So normally from our observation, low energy boundary can be can form at very early stage of recrystallization. And then gradually, uh, so for example, uh, often people recognize there is some incubation period of grain growth because low energy boundary have to increase their energy up to certain to get the mobility. So that's the, uh, the incubation period. So after the, uh, that means boundary, low energy boundary have to absorb the lattice dislocation, increase the boundary energy, and then disorientation and more increase and more mobility increase and then grain growth starts. You have two textures, an yeah. O01 and an O11 texture. Mm -hmm. And you found that for the O01 texture, you were getting sigma 5, sigma 13, which are all boundaries that are related by O01 axis. Oh no, that's the one one. Depending on that, because sigma value is different, as I showed, depending on that type of texture, please carefully look at it. This value is different. Yes. Yes. You, would ex you would expect for a texture ah. that had a lot of OO1 components, the boundaries that would impinge yeah. would be coincident site that is associated with an OO1 rotation the, such as sigma 5. But the total fraction is almost the same, 40, 45 percent. Yes, of course. But you would expect that the, the, the distribution between the top ones are all our ones. But if if you summate these boundary, total fraction almost four, forty-five percent, almost same. Oh, sorry. Isn't but there, uh, uh, isn't there a problem with the texture that we are not actually saying that this grain is next to this grain? I'm saying that yeah. the, the, if, if, if your, your boundary is nuclear separate. With OO1 normals on that kit, ah. then the texture is determining the boundaries for that. And now I think that's the way that crystallization reverses the Because the data don't have that, that information about the neighbor, you know, whether this grade is next to this grade. These well, actually. EBSD data. Now, yeah. always we are using EBSD. In, in the past, the many people use the X ray. Actually, X ray case cannot tell data, cannot tell the neighboring relations. This is the reason why since 19, beginning of 19, we use the electron channel pattern te technique and now EBSD. This is, is the is most this important. Is this is EBSD? Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, sorry, this is the electron, I use the electron channel pattern, same. Right, right. But one by one. This is the most important part of this kind of experiment. Otherwise, we cannot say because of neighboring relation Yeah, uh, I just wonder, what is the distribution 
limit uh, for the orientation or, or email uh, Again, that's a good question. Because if you use X-ray low wave method, the, result, the resolution of orientation determination, say, less than one degree. But uh, electron channel pattern technique, just like the same as the Kikuchi pattern, 0.1 degree. So this is a very necessary to determine the deviation from exact the, the, the uh, coincidence orientation. How, how about the coincide? Well, it doesn't matter. That's not matter. That's not matter. Even for nanocrystalline material or coarse grain one millimeter, that's not matter. We can only determine the orientation between the two grains. Just Very much indeed again and thank you for your attention.